Ah, uh, adapting a computer game into a TV series. What could go wrong? I just don't eat animals. My dad took me hunting last fall. It was awesome. Shot Bambi in the brain. Bugger me, I guess a lot. But regardless, the big dogs at HBO said bollocks to it, let's do it anyways, and commissioned a TV version of the wildly successful 2013 computer game, The Last of Us. Now your mate Big Dave has been known to give the old joystick a waggle from time to time, and can honestly say, having played The Last of Us, it was bloody brilliant. The game tells the story of Joel and Ellie as they attempt to travel across a North America devastated by an apocalyptic virus that turns humans into, well, basically zombies. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit cliched, but trust me, the game and the story it tells are excellent, and if done right, can make a bollock tinglingly good TV series. Obviously, if done wrong, it'll be yet another computer game to TV show fuck up. But hey, it's not like we're not used to those by now. We're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Uh. Those bloody plumbers nick my best dance moves. Right, back on topic. The HBO adaption of The Last of Us is getting close, and I mean less than 10 days from the time I release this video, if I ever get the bloody editing done. As the show's due to premiere on the 16th of January, will it be an absolute banger, smashing all records and showing once and for all that computer games can make decent telly, or will it be yet another Resident Evil cringe fest? Well, in this video, I'm going to assume it's the former and give you 10 reasons why HBO's The Last of Us will be amazing. Don't worry all you naysayers out there, I'm also planning to do 10 reasons why it'll be a total crap fest. That'll be in my next video. So get yourselves comfy and let's do it. Big days, big reviews. At number 10, my first reason for The Last of Us being a hit is that HBO shows are great. Well, usually. By now, we all know what to expect from a HBO series. Whether you like the show or not, it's more than likely going to be a high quality production. HBO have seen a long run of success based upon their policy of producing fewer shows but always to as high a standard as they can, using the best talent available to them. And we all know it's a formula that works. I mean, they produce some of the best shows of all time, like Band of Brothers, The Sopranos, Chernobyl, The Wire, and even Game of Thrones. Well, at least until around season six-ish, when it all started turning to bollocks. HBO have the financial clout, experience, and talent to pull off this show, and I for one wouldn't bet against them. Although, having said that, they did force this televisual war crime on us. At number 9, the story that the show will be based on is bloody marvellous. Yes, we've all seen post-apocalyptic zombie films and TV shows before, but The Last of Us really nailed the genre. You've got interesting characters put into unimaginably tough situations, with gruesome death, or worse, always a heartbeat away. The two main characters, Joel and Ellie, are so different, but the way their characters and relationships develop throughout the game is touchingly real. Joel is your everyman survivor that has lost so much but refuses to give up. Ellie is outgoing and optimistic, and it's hard not to like her. There's a lot more to it than that, but I don't really want to get into spoiler territory. Suffice to say, the TV show has a great story to work from, well, at least for season one. And on a similar note, at eight, it's the fact the TV show won't be going beyond the games much. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, showrunner Craig Mazin stated that, overall, the series is highly faithful to the game. He also stated that, we have no plans to tell any stories beyond adapting the games. For me personally, this is music to my ears. My number one hate in any TV series is spinning it out for profit. Concepts have a shelf life. Broadly speaking, the more complex the show's concept, the more runtime it can sustain before indifference or incredulity sets in. Take Lost, for example. The concept is actually very simple. Plane crashes, people stranded on an island. I started watching the show and I loved it. But halfway through season one, I realized they'd scheduled six seasons of it with as many as 25 episodes in a single season. I instantly stopped watching. When you boil Lost down, it's a series of mystery boxes. Now, a mystery box is a plot device where information about an object or idea is deliberately withheld from the viewer in order to pique their curiosity. Initially, this is exciting, but after a while, it becomes incredibly stale, then frustrating. At least for me and Brad Pitt, anyway. The box. What was in the box? What's in the box? Not you give me What's the in the fucking box? So the fact The Last of Us is scheduled for only two seasons in line with the two games is great news for me. At seven, the zombies are as cool as balls. That's right, there's many a show out there with many a different zombie, but The Last of Us really nails it in that department. 
Without giving too much away, rest assured, there's no slow shambling zombo lads here. No, sir. In fact, the common type of zombies are called runners. Can you guess what they do? And they aren't even the really scary ones. There are other types that are even more terrifying. If the show is anything like the game, there will be some genuinely scary scenes for us all to enjoy, probably from behind the sofa. Right, before we go to reason six, I'd like to kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel. As it's a small channel, I can honestly say that your subscriptions really mean the world to me and it'll ensure you don't miss out on any Big Dave content. Thank you. At reason six, they've only gone and cast two Game of Thrones actors as the leads. Yes, that's right. Everyone's favorite Dornishman, Pedro Pascal, will be starring as Joel, whilst the gobbiest child in Westeros, Lyanna Mormont, played by actress Bella Ramsey, will be playing at Ellie. Obviously, these two never shared any screen time during Game of Thrones because, well, poor Oberon came second in the duel to the death with the mountain. Hey. <laughs> but come on, these two are bound to work together on screen, right? My guess is yes. I've always liked your boy Pedro and he looks the part as Joel and Bella clearly has a lot of acting potential. Now, I will say there is a fair bit of discussion about the dreaded race swapping that's happened in this show, but I'm going to save that for my next video. For now, suffice to say, I think these two will deliver the goods. At five, they picked a banging tune to slow down and make all dramatic -y. These days, all big shows take a pop classic, slow it down and make it all mournful and dramatic-like. Well, The Last of Us only went and did it to an all-time sing-along classic, Aha's Take On Me. Now, obviously, if I play any of it, I'll get copyright struck into the middle of 2024. So go listen to it for yourselves in the trailers. Hmm, I suppose I could sing a few bars for you just so you get the idea. Only joking, I wouldn't subject you lovely lot to that. The fourth reason for The Last of Us being a success is they got some bloody good writers and producers. As mentioned earlier, HBO have built their success upon getting the right talent for the job and I suspect that might be the case here too. They've hired Craig Mazin, best known for creating the smash hit Chernobyl to write and produce it. Clearly a great choice. Neil Druckmann, who created the original game, is also on board as part of the production team. Now, old Neil is somewhat of a divisive figure in the gaming community, but I'll cover that geezer in more detail in my next video. For now, the choice of showrunner seems a good one to me, so I'm sticking this in the positive column. At three, it's one episode a week, baby. When a production company releases one episode a week of a series, they're saying one thing and one thing only. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. That's right. I'm too good for you plebs to binge watch me. Get out of here with that shit. You filthy commoners shall consume me slowly and gradually like a fine wine. Not like some greasy kebab after the pub on a Friday night. And I, for one, love it. If the show's a cracker, it gives a whole week to discuss it and build the hype up for next week's episode. At two, it's all a matter of timing. There's not a lot of competition out there right now. With House of the Dragon over, the lamentable Rings of Power thankfully over, and other surprise hits calming down. The coast is clear for HBO to take over that prime time water cooler slot. We know this show will likely have a built-in fan base of gamers. The original game sold over 20 million copies worldwide. Not many shows start off with that kind of advantage. Add to it word of mouth, there's inevitably going to occur, and I suspect the show will rapidly grow into part of the current zeitgeist, whatever that means. I also think the burnout some people felt towards post-apocalyptic zombie shows has decreased a little bit lately. There was a time when you couldn't change the channel without seeing some family or other hiding from zombies behind a burned out car. Some of these shows and films were better than others. But currently, other than The Walking Dead, which let's be honest has been on the decline for some time now, there's not that oversaturation of this genre that there once was. Maybe people are ready for a new entrant in this field, yours truly included. And my final reason why The Last of Us TV show will be a smash hit is HBO seem pretty bloody confident. The rumours are that the HBO execs think they've got a big winner on their hands with this show. The murmuring is that they're very pleased with how the show turned out and I think there's a key piece of evidence to back this up, namely the advertising. A lot of people don't realise how much of a show's costs actually come from advertising. It can be in the region of 50% sometimes. These companies aren't stupid, well not all of them anyways. If they think they've got a dud on their hands, they won't usually piss away even more money on advertising. The fact HBO have gone all out promoting The Last of Us is a good indicator that they think they've got a winner on their hands here. I mean, look at these adverts, that ain't cheap. 
I tried to get a billboard behind a garage in South London to advertise my company and they wanted half my mortgage for it. I can't imagine what this cost. Advertising aside, HBO spent a fortune on this show. The figures out there suggest that HBO slapped down about $100 million for it, making it more expensive than pretty much every season of Game of Thrones. That's some serious backing. But what do you think? Will the show be a success or do you think it's going to fail worse than my attempt to insulate the loft last weekend? Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. With any luck, I'll have my follow-up video, 10 Reasons The Last of Us Will Be Utterly Shit, well, something like that, I've not really nailed the title yet, ready for your entertainment soon. Take care, you lovely lot. Bloody hell, you've made it to the end of the show. Well done, you. Now, if you can be a diamond and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, that will make sure we can keep in touch in future. Please also drop a like on the video and maybe even comment below. A bit of banter is always welcome. I'd like to wish you all the best. Until next time.